So let's have a look at these Angular JS um, things. As you can see, when you have a website with Angular JS, these older versions of Angular JS, so below, so below Angular two. So we are talking about Angular one point something. If you have content reflection in some kind of case, like a typical, like user variable is just placed into the website, then typical XSS would require you to be able to inject HTML. Okay, this is a bad example because there's another uh, a client side it's Vue.js. Um, it, it requires you to be able to inject HTML characters like these HTML tags, the 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 pointy brackets and and so forth, right? Then you can turn that into an XSS. But the output might be perfectly filtered. Maybe there you escape the HTML perfectly. But then you use a a client side language like Angular JS, which now you know, when AngularJS executes, it basically goes over your whole HTML code and is looking for curly braces. And when it finds curly braces, it does something to it. And in this case, it kind of executes the JavaScript within those curly braces. And suddenly you have JavaScript execution without having to use, you know, a template, uh, an HTML tag with an event handler or a script tag or whatever like that, right? However, but it's not that simple because they tried to implement the JavaScript sandbox where you can only access certain AngularJS variables or you can only access, you know, you can do basic math, one plus five or a variable plus five or something, like very basic stuff. Maybe you can even call uh, functions that you have defined. Um, but it's all like very sandbox. The intention is only that you can call very specific Angular uh, like things that you have uh, written in your Angular app. But as you can see here, um, because this is still regular JavaScript that's getting executed, um, you can like break out of your um, escape. So the, the original escape, basically that there was no sandbox yet, was going constructor.constructor .constructor and alert. And this is super easy uh, escape to understand. So if you imagine that there's an Angular object, can I, can I make this larger? When you add Angular to your website, the Angular script, uh, you can imagine that there, I, I, I'm not so sure if, if it's called Angular, but you can imagine that there's an Angular object, right? Like that exists. And now when you write curly braces like this, Angular would turn whatever you write in those curly braces into, um, into a variable. So let's say, on the Angular object is a variable called ASD. And, and now you write code that what whatever is in the curly braces um, is printed. And if, if it's a variable that exists like ASD, it gets printed. So basically something like this would get turned into window.angular.asd, okay? So that's kind of like how those, this templating stuff works. Um, and it prints one. So now on the website, you would print one. But now the XSS, payload here is like constructor.constructor. .constructor. So let's see what happens. Angular is an object. And if you go to the constructor, you get the object constructor. And when you call constructor again, now you have the function constructor. Um, you know, this is just inheritance object oriented languages, right? And now that you have a function constructor, you can make it construct the function. In this case, we are constructing a function with the code alert one. Okay, <laughs> bad example. This website is using CSP. Um, that's unfortunate. Uh, let's quickly uh, go to this created now a new function. And this function is an anonymous function. This function doesn't have a name but the code of this function is alert one. Um, if you look at this function now, you call it. So you have two curly bra uh, brackets, um, parentheses at the end. Now you call that function, so you execute alert one. So this was a sandbox escape. There was not really a sandbox in this early version. So after this, suddenly they try to prevent this and then the cat and mouse game that I just mentioned in the video started. Now they really try to clean this code um, in order, so they tried to, that you can't access the constructor, but I guess their first fix you could do, still 
get the constructor on this on function and get the constructor from there. And then you, now you can see it gets really crazy. Now you make a, a variable A with the text constructor, an object B, and now you just go wild and you try to, you know, access the constructor um, uh, in different ways. This one is interesting because actually in AngularJS, um, this code is kind of assembled in text and then placed in like a, an eval script. And this simply was a bypass of that part. Um, it gets injected into the text and then it gets eval. So you break out there. That's So this is a bit int more interesting, oh, different, a different strategy of sandbox escape than these ones here. Anyway, this went, this went crazy. Look at this, how crazy these things were because Angular just always tried to fix again ways how people got access to the constructor or people got access to eval and so forth. Uh, look at this, <laughs> look at this one, Jan Horn, crazy. Um, yeah, but since 1.6, they decided, fuck it, this is too hard, this makes no sense, let's remove the sandbox at all, uh, co let's completely remove the sandbox. Um, and so now you are back to the beginning where there is basically no sandbox. This is not really a sandbox, this is just using JavaScript. Long story short, uh, I made a video series about these AngularJS bypasses. Uh, a couple, we, we looked at two of them, I believe, or no, three of them in detail. And, and we look at uh, the bypass, the fix, and then bypass the, the next uh, bypass and so forth. So if you're interested in this, I think even though it's an old series and I know AngularJS 1.4, you won't see in production really that much anymore. Not that important for bug bounty, I guess. But if you are interested in learning more advanced XSS stuff, um, the AngularJS um, playlist, I think, is, you know, a really good learning resource, in my opinion, hopefully. Anyway. Anyway.